Hey guys, Elena here. Thanks for coming back. As you know, summer tends to be the number one time that people fall off. Kids are out of school. We're kind of throwing off our schedule. But don't you worry. If you fell off over this summer, I'm going to help you get back on. Stay tuned. Okay, so welcome back. Let's go ahead and get started. As I said in the intro, summer tends to be the biggest time for people to fall off. I don't know if it's because it's hot. I don't know if it's because the kids are out of school. We're just kind of thrown off our schedule. But whatever reason it is, whatever reason you might have fallen off this summer, you know, kids are back in school now. It's time to jump back on. And I have five tips to help you do that. So the first one is to set realistic goals. Goals are so, so, so important. And you know, really when you restart or when you jump back in, you really wanna make sure that you have those somewhere written down. And I recommend that you go get like a little daily journal or a like desk calendar and actually write your goals down. Give yourself daily goals, give yourself weekly goals, give yourself a big scary goal at the end, right? Maybe you want to lose 50 pounds, maybe you want to drop a few dress sizes, whatever it is. And your daily goals could be as simple as follow your meal plan, work out, anything that you feel is going to get you closer to your main goal write that down, put it where you can see it every day. And I know we have apps and I know that we have other things that we could use like notebooks in our phone, but it's so important to write it down and put it where you could see it every day to remind yourself to get on track, to stick with it, keep going and your reason why, right? And then once you hit that goal, you go ahead and like highlight it, you can cross it off. It always feels good to cross things off our to-do list, right? So set some goals and write them down, stick with it. That's the first easiest step, right? The second is a fitness routine. If you are physically able to work out, then you should 100% be working out. And I'm not saying go to the gym for five hours or anything crazy, go run 10 miles. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm saying that working out is so beneficial. If you're doing a keto diet, you're gonna be burning even more fat, right? Because your body's already in ketosis. Well, once you jump back in, your body is gonna be in ketosis. If you're doing a fasted lifestyle, you're gonna be in ketosis as well. Since all your glycogen stores have depleted, you're gonna be running purely off of your fat stores, which is huge when you're working out. If you see my results, my workout schedule is huge part of it. I work out daily, five days a week. And you know, even if you just start with like a 30 minute workout, that is great. Or if you're not really into like doing workout videos or going to the gym, you could always just do a 30 minute walk. Even that is gonna be great, especially if you're just starting. Walking will be a great way for you to get back in the routine. You can put that on your daily calendar, check it off every day, just get your body moving. You are gonna maximize your results so much just by adding in a workout. There was a few months where I only did walking for 30 minutes a day. I still saw great results. I still felt amazing. And I really feel like even if it's just walking, it's going to help you reach your big scary goal even faster than if you're not. So if you're able to work out. The third one is for your first two weeks to add in extra calories. And I'm not talking like calories like candy or anything crazy. I'm talking about like fat calories, you know, the good calories, the ones that your body needs to run as well as it can when you're in keto. And what's going to happen is you're going to notice once you transition back into keto, once you transition back into even healthy eating, your body is going to kind of freak out. It's going to want those sweets. It's going to want those carbs. And especially on day three, your cravings are going to be overloading you and you just got to push through. But if you're um, upping your calories, upping your fat, maybe making some fat bombs, you know, that's really going to help you push through, giving your body the extra fat, the extra calories that it needs, kind of throwing off the cravings a little bit. But don't think that, you know, like, okay, six months ago when I was doing it, I could do this, this, and this. I could hit my macros perfect. You know, I'm going to jump right back in. No, your body is going to need to adjust. You need to give yourself a little bit of time. Give yourself, you know, an easy plan to work yourself back into it. You could also start... Um, 
with just your net carbs like I talked about in my previous video on how to start keto. You know, start with those, work them down, and just make sure that you're giving yourself, like, grace. You know, you fell off, that's okay. Jump back in, but jump back in slowly so you'll be more likely to stick with it and not give up. My fourth is when you're jumping back in, do not overwhelm yourself. And what I mean by that is don't sit there and say, I promised myself for the next year I'm going to do keto and I'm going to work out two times a day, every single day, and this and this and this and this, like, which gets, it sounds good, right? Like when you're first there, you're like, yeah, that sounds great. But it can be so overwhelming when you give yourself these humongous, like, time goals. So instead, I really recommend that you write your goals out like we talked about in the first, but take it day by day. Don't stress over the long run. Don't freak yourself out. Don't overwhelm yourself. Just really focus day by day and give yourself those wins, which why it's so important for you guys to write it down and check it off because then you accomplish something and you can give yourself a pat on the back. You can feel great and you can just really focus on creating this lifestyle again without being overwhelmed, without giving up. You know, tell yourself this, like if you make it through one day, good job. You make it through two days, good job. You make it through three, so on, right? You made it through your first week, yes. Pat yourself on the back, be proud of yourself. Make it through the second week, that's even better. And then you're going to realize, like, I did two weeks of this. Like, why am I going to want to go back? Like, why am I going to want to throw all my progress down the drain? You're not going to want it, right? And it's going to, like, multiply, multiply, multiply. And before you know it, you're going to be six months in, a year in, crushing those goals. Just try to take it easy in the beginning. You're going to get where you want to be. The fifth is to plan ahead. This is super important, especially when we're starting back up. Because you're going to notice that you're going to have those cravings. And the first two weeks are going to probably be a little bit harder for you than you're anticipating. Especially if you're doing keto, you might be getting the keto flu. Um, but planning will help. I really recommend that you sit down. Like on a Sunday would be a great day. You sit down on a Sunday and you write out your meal plan. So, you know, you can go to Pinterest, you can search my Key Delicious group, you can search on Google, find recipes that you think sound good, sound, find recipes that fit in your macros if you're counting them, and then just write it down, write your grocery list to meet your meal plan, and go grocery shopping for only those. Plan ahead. It's so much easier to stay on track if you have a meal plan. If you have a plan, grab some things for snacks like pepperonis or salamis, you know, some cheese, some nuts, some jerky, you know, easy keto snacks to have just in case you're, you know, hungry. You don't, you just don't want to be at the point where you're like starving, you're like hungry, and then you're like, oh my gosh, like I don't know what I want, and you have no food at your house, and then you're just like running to like the gas station, or you're running to fast food, and you're eating that. Like, no, you don't want to be doing that. You just want to have it here. So that way, if you're starving, or if you're hungry, or if it's lunchtime, you could simply go in your fridge, go get what you planned out, and eat it. And you know, honestly, you don't need to like meal prep for the whole week. Like I'm not saying like make all your food, put it in containers and throw it in the fridge. Like you don't have to do that, but if you want to, you can. But if you have a plan, if you have a plan and you have the foods there, you could totally just make it, eat it, and done. Like you don't even have to worry about it. And don't beat yourself up if you've fallen off over the summer. Don't worry. It happens to so many people. You are not alone. And what counts is that you're ready to jump back in. So I hope my tips have helped you. I'm excited that you're jumping back on this journey. I am always here if you need me. And have a great day. Bye.